How you doing everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Mo and today we got a pretty big project for the Scoria. We are changing the needle bearing and the differential to the East Coast Gear Supply clamshell bushing. Uh, and this bushing should help uh, a lot of uh, the slop that I have with the CV axle. I think everybody should do it whether you own a Sequoia, GX, Forerunner, Tacoma, uh, anyone with the, with the same kind of style clamshell should be doing it. It's just a Toyota design, it's a little faulty. Once you wear, uh, lift it, it's gonna wear out uh, the inside of the needle bearing and that will cause more problem and slop. So yeah, it's not that hard, I don't think. I've never done anything this big, so we're gonna get into it and I'm gonna try to do it as step-by-step step as I can and tell y'all if there's any hidden stuff that you need to know and all that stuff. So let's get into it. All right, so this is the uh, clamshell bushing that we're gonna get, that we got from my uh, East Coast Gear Supply. And I'll show y'all compared to the needle bearing that we have uh, inside the truck. So this one's supposed to have a lot tighter tolerance, which, you know, not gonna have a lot of movement and slop in the CV axle. Uh, also, this is the tool to remove it. Uh, this is also from East Coast Gear Supply and the install tool. We're gonna go in depth on how to do it. Should be you know fairly simple again i've never done anything this big or even taken out a cv axle on any of my cars so this should be a big learning experience but i'm gonna try to document it for you guys and go step by step so anybody could do this job all right first thing we're gonna do is take that factory skid plate and jack the truck up to remove the factory skid plate we got four 12 millimeter bolts two on the front and then two in the rear so I got one missing, but yeah, you need to remove those and the skid plate will come off. Once we get the skid plate off, it's time to jack up the truck. The reason we did that is so once we take the CV axle out, it's gonna drip some oil. So uh, we need to refill it and top it off. So that would be easier. Take it off right now, uh, instead of when we have the jack and everything under there. All right, so let's go ahead and uh jack up the truck so we got her somehow jacked up i went ahead and jacked it up from the side and put uh my jack stands kind of in the middle and up front right here so it can gives me room to get the cv axle out now we just gotta take the wheel off and go in and show y'all what we need to take off to get to the cv axle so we got the wheel off if you have wheel spacers Go ahead and take off the wheel spacers so we can get to this dust boot right here. Uh, if you don't, then wait for the next step. I'll show you how to take that uh, dust boot off. But yeah, let me get these wheel spacers off and then we'll get into taking off the dust boot. Take off these uh, wheel spacers. Every time you try to, you know, pull them, uh, they're going to spin. So the easiest way to do, if you have a friend, let them hit the brake. If you don't, then just put a screwdriver in here and that will stop it. And you can loosen them up that way all right so the space is removed now we have the dust cover uh clear and ready to be pulled out so i got this uh scraper set right here uh so they're pretty thin and tapered so i can try to kind of get it on the edge and kind of work my way around as you can see this one hasn't been taken off since it's probably brand new my cv boots and axle are pretty in good shape for how many miles i got but anyways uh, we're going to go ahead and slowly just kind of work it until we get a little gap and then use a flathead screwdriver to pull it out. Just be careful not to damage the edge because it seems like a lot of people damage those when they take them off. So we got the dust boot off um, and guys, I ended up damaging mine a little bit right here. You can see it a little bit bent. As I said, just be careful. I was, uh, I thought the screwdriver where I was using was going in, but apparently it was on the edge and it was uh, bending it. So I screwed up pretty bad on that one. I mean, it's not a big deal. It just, you know, I'm gonna nose damage is gonna bother me. Maybe I get another one, put it on there, but just be careful because it'll bend real easy and you don't want to damage yours. You know, just work it slowly, as you can see. You know, the bend, so it'll get like moisture and dust and all that stuff if you bend it so just be careful when you're taking it off now that we have the cotter pin and access to the cv axle nut and all that stuff we're gonna stop right here and then take the uh lower ball joint head bolts so those head bolts are gonna be right here 
there's four of them i don't know if you could see them there's four of them and they're 17 millimeters so we're gonna take those off first and then i'll remove the cv axle nut and pu push it out and uh take this whole spindle uh away i'll show y'all a way that you could do it and basically you don't have to take the brakes or nothing you just kind of swing it out and you'll have full access to the cv axle and uh the differential in there since we got the dust cover off then we're just gonna get these caught up in and just bend it back all right once we get that out then we got this locking pin thing and then now we have the cv axle uh nut now you can hit it with an impact or you can use a breaker bar again if you can use a breaker bar um or even an impact i'd recommend putting a screwdriver here so you you know the wheel won't turn or have a buddy uh hit the brakes so let's go ahead and do that so it uses a 36 millimeter socket hit it with the impact and you're good now we are gonna be loosening up these four head bolts that go to the lower ball joint instead of taking the lower ball joint itself apart we're just going to take these apart and then this whole spindle this whole assembly should swing out to the side and make it easier for us to get the uh cv axle out but before that if you haven't taken it out just put some rust penny and hammer it. make sure you don't damage the threads on here especially if you're going to reuse the cv axle mine is pretty good so we're going to reuse it but let's go ahead and take those head bolts off and then get the cv axle out so these are 17 millimeter bolts uh you can hit them with an impact but i like to try with you know hand tools first if it doesn't work then hit it with the impact just so i won't damage any of the bolts or anything like that so let's go ahead and take these off and then uh we'll swing them out and take the cv axle off so we went ahead and took the head bolts uh at the bottom off now all we have to do is kind of tap on the cv axle to get it out so that was pretty easy moved out we removed it you just kind of pull out and pick up and move it to the side like this and the abs and, and the brake lines are not binded or anything like that so we're all in the clear uh it's good to have a friend to move this because it is pretty heavy but as you can see i kind of put a bunch of cord and tied it to my sliders right here uh, i'm pretty sure you could find somewhere under there to tie it but it's holding pretty well and now we got full access of the cv axle which is quite frankly uh so far has been straightforward and pretty easy especially doing it this way instead of taking the rotors and uh caliper off yeah so i don't know how the cv axle is gonna pull out um we're gonna get under there and use uh one of those um pry bars and the dead blow and kind of push it out i'll show y'all where to hit it so it can come out easily uh, because we got that c-clip uh holding it in uh preventing it from coming out but yeah uh so far it's pretty easy uh, let's just go ahead and take the cv axle lot and that will expose the uh, needle bearing uh in there which is gonna be quite hard just from the depth of it and it's not being jacked up in the air too high so i'm gonna have to be underneath the truck putting that thing in and uh, of course the coilovers are gonna be in the way but we'll see how it goes but yeah pretty simple uh let's go ahead and take the cv axle now i'll show y'all where to hit it so we're underneath the car now and we got the cv axle right here so the best way to do it is try to get it somewhere around here and tap it with a long uh pry bar and mine has the metal on the on the end so i can uh hit it with a hammer or mallet and should pop out uh we'll see since this one hasn't came out uh ever on the life of the truck uh i don't know how hard is it gonna be to get out so we'll see uh i'm gonna go ahead and hit it and we'll see if it comes out easily or not so we got it out i have three different uh sizes of pry bars lengthwise i use the smallest one and kind of pry it on it and then hit it with a hammer and it came out but it's leaking uh gear oil as you can see so be careful that's a lot more gear oil than i thought would leak out so we're definitely gonna have to uh top it off so just be careful it wasn't too hard again never came out uh 
out of this truck so i just had to pry on it a little bit and then kind of hit it with a hammer right here on the edge and it just popped off and now we can take the uh cv axle out and that will expose the needle bearing so we can replace it with the east coast gear supply uh clamshell bushing all right so let's pull this out and i'll show you all what we're talking about all right as you can see that's the needle bearing and that's the seal that i think we're gonna have to replace so i bought it so i'm gonna replace it but it seems like it definitely needs to be replaced it's old but yeah mine i don't think my needle bearing is bad that bad but i still get vibration and uh since i'm lifting it might as well go ahead and change it while we're in there it shouldn't be too difficult it's just we don't have much room um to work with so and also i have a lot more gear oil uh coming out of the differential than i thought I, i've changed it not too long ago uh part of the maintenance uh thing that i did but yeah i'm definitely gonna have to retop it off just because i lost a pretty good bit especially if i do the other side just uh change out the seal and everything there's one other thing i wanted to know about the uh this needle bearing and then seal i would get a mic and measure out uh where the seal is because technically it's supposed to be 5.5 millimeters uh from the looks of it right now it's kind of flush with the outside and also you want to see where the needle bearing is attached right now i don't know if there's any natural stops for the needle bearing and the seal so we're going to take pictures and use the mic uh digital mic kind of to see how far they stick out and or go in when we put the new east coast gear supply uh bushing in we know exactly where it's going to be at and then when we put the new seal we know where it's going to be at also so that's something that you should do take pictures and take measurements just in case uh so you can remember when you're installing everything back now that everything's clear we're going to go ahead and put a plastic bag in there now you could get like one of those gallon lunch bags i just had this laying around so i'm gonna uh, insert it in there so when we put the tool it will not go inside the differential and we have to fish it out this is kind of like a stopper to it since we got that bag in there now i put it on a magnet and kind of reach them back there to install the tool let's see if we can get it in i might have to use my fingers and hand to get it all the way in i got it in i went uh put the bottom one first and kind of slid it and then hit it uh hit the top part pry bar and a hammer and it went in pretty easily we're just gonna thread the tool in there and pull the uh old bushing out so we can install the new bushing after that we're gonna install the uh cv axle seal because it can see, as you can see it's not too bad but still uh it needs to be changed so that's gonna be the next step after uh, removing the bushing so we got the tool on there and it's gonna take a 92 mil uh, wrench. If you have a ratcheting wrench, that would be so much better. Uh, I don't, so I'm kinda gonna have to do it manually and do 100 turns. But we're gonna go ahead and put it on there and turn it until the bushing pops out. So I'm gonna do it. The bushing will pop out eventually. Uh, we'll move to the next step after that. But that's how the tool is supposed to look. We got the uh, needle bearing finally out. That was a little bit of a pain in the ass to be honest with you because uh, the whole drive shaft was spinning. So I had to uh, pry on it at the end. Uh, just pry on that tool. Uh, it has a little hang. So I just put the prior there and it came out. My bearing looks pretty fine. Uh, I don't see any kind of damage on it. Even after I pulled it out, uh, maybe a little dent here and there. So what happens is with this bearing is when you lift it, it'll put too much load on the side right here those bearings right here they will tear up and end up in your differential this one will have a lot tighter design and also you won't have to worry about anything breaking once you lift it where it damage your front differential so this one's gonna be so much better than this and it's just a lot beefier i mean even weight and everything this one just had those bearings inside you know doesn't make any sense now seeing it compared to the uh, east coast gear supply one uh, but yeah this bushing should be so much better than the old one since we got it out let's go ahead and put this one in and uh button everything up and call it a day because it's been a long day doing this so we got the bushing out we have the plastic bag there do not forget that plastic bag we're gonna take it out and then install the bushing itself now the bushing you got two faces this face right here is gonna be on the inside and this face the smooth one is gonna be on the outside so it's gonna go like this uh now put a little bit of 
bureau or whatever so it can go in smoothly uh but you want to make sure it's centered first before you drive all the way in so we're gonna go ahead and do that and take the bag out and drive it in finally got the bushing in now it's not gonna be 100 percent flush because it is a little bit longer than the old bushing so don't be hammering it in all the way i had a hard time getting it centered but finally got it centered and just drove it in now it's time to replace that seal so i'm gonna pull it out and i'm gonna give you all, all the part numbers that you need uh for the seal so the driver's side which is where the bearing is gonna go is gonna use this part number and this is a toyota part so it's gonna be 90311-47027 that's the seal for the uh driver's side also got the seal for the passenger side since i'm gonna go ahead and redo them and also keep an eye out for the next video because we are gonna be rebooting the cv axles so let's go ahead and get this uh seal removed and put the new one in so i got a seal puller but what i'm gonna do is use uh one of these and just pop it out a lot easier i don't want to use the seal puller since it's still brand new uh this one got oil but we'll just you know put it here and pop it off so i'm going to pop it off and then put the new seal in you always want to make sure that the seal is the same as the old one as you can see it matches up pretty well so i'll flip it over fits right in same width and then vice versa so this seal looks like it has not been changed since it was brand new but yeah we're gonna go ahead and replace that with the cv axles so put this new seal in i got this uh ball joint uh u-joint service set uh from any auto parts you just uh pull it kind of find the right size i think it's this one right here and it'll just fit around it well this one's a little too small i think this one or this one yeah this one is for the driver's side so it just fits around it and you put this on top and you just hammer it in and it'll go in simple as that so let's go ahead and uh install this uh cv axle seal all right as you can see we got the new seal in we got the new bushing in so now all is left is just to put your cv axle in now at this point if you have a factory cv axles I would highly recommend going ahead and rebooting them before putting them in. Uh, it's up to you again, but that's my recommendation. So we're going to go ahead and put the CV axle in and uh, button everything up. And I will let y'all know what the torque specs for each bolt that we took off. Well, yeah, that's uh, that's it. It wasn't a simple job, but at the same time, it was a big learning experience. And it's something that I thought I couldn't do. But uh, as you can see, we did it. It just takes time, patience, and uh, just be careful and watch every step. But yeah, uh, let's go ahead and put the CV axles in and uh, button everything up so i skipped a couple steps uh because it started raining we got the cv axle in uh we tied the uh cv axle nut and we tied the head bolts down there now i would use a jack to jack up the lower control arm so it can meet those head bolts uh right and you torque them to 59 i put 60 foot pounds and then for this uh cv axle nut i just went with 174 plus 173 something like that and then i went ahead and put the dust boot and the cotter pin and all that and i tightened the wheel spacers to 90 foot pounds and yeah that's all that's left and let me put the wheels on and i will fill it up with uh gear oil once i do the other side the other side is basically the same you just do it and uh yeah that should be it all right guys as you can see i am a complete mess this was a pretty big job uh i got it done but i'm hoping you guys learn from this uh and i'm hoping this video is very very helpful for any guys with sequoias because i can't find any videos that are specifically for the sequoia but anyways uh if you like this video go ahead and like comment subscribe and i'll have uh more videos coming